There's already been news of private schools that have been forced to close and that specifically cater for children with special needs. And, uh, and, and this is because of the uh, threat to put VAT on independent education. Now, the, an area that hasn't received very much interest is the area of the performing arts. Many schools are structured purely and simply to cater to the performing arts schools like the Sylvia Young schools. Uh, they say that they are aware of parents' anxiety and are monitoring the situation, but there are other schools that are um, tearing their hair out over the possibility that they can even continue. The Yehudi Menuhin school uh, is very much aware that VAT will impose a hole in the finances that they think donors are unlikely to be able to fill. This is detrimental to the arts should these schools disappear, to the arts, to music, and it will further um, impact on the destruction of the cultural life of our nation by unthinking uh, ministers and un an unthinking government. We, we, we've had 14 years of twits in the Department of Digital Culture, Media and Sport. Twits like Oliver Dowden, Nadine Doris, bizarrely, Matt Hancock, uh, and Jeremy Hunt. These people who do not have a commitment to the arts. This is so bizarre and such a disappointment, particularly in the case of Nadine Doris, who writes books. And these books may not be Dickens, but they are certainly page turners. And um, I would have expected slightly more commitment from her. But actually what we got was significantly more destruction. I was so disappointed. Um, Tring Park School in Hearts, uh, Tring Park School for the Performing Arts, says that it's got a huge concern for the future of the arts because its school is a place for... Uh, it offers a full full um, education generally, but it's a, it's, a, it's a place and a space for the vocational arts training and to focus on the arts. And it says that 46% of its students already receive financial assistance. And Chetham School uh, of Music in Manchester says that even getting that financial assistance is going to become a problem with the VAT because uh, the grants will be impacted by that. Um, it's not just about profit. In fact, it's not about profit at all. Many of these smaller um, schools focusing on providing the arts, providing an arts education for children, um, don't make a profit. They barely break even. They are working on very, very tight margins. And while the um, while, while, while the plans to put VAT on independent education sound very egalitarian, um, it, it, is, it is seriously going to impact those areas of education that main school education, that mainstream education simply cannot accommodate. And um, and, and a lot of it seems, uh, even if it's not admitted, to be driven by the ideology, as, for example, um, uh, reported today by Angela Rayner's uh, 2018 comments about the abolition entirely of independent education in the UK. Everyone should go to a comprehensive. Well, she forgets that some of the best education in the UK is provided by grammar schools. There's two major, major schools in my hometown of rugby. Uh, one is rugby school, which is an independent school, which sometimes is good and sometimes is not so good. I've, I've spoken at it. And the other one is a local grammar school, Lawrence Sheriff, which is phenomenally good. Phenomenally good. Uh, one of the best schools in the country with magnificent results. Well, if every school is going to be turned into a comprehensive, goodbye magnificent results.
It, it fl the, this ideology flies in the face of the evidence, and the evidence is clear. Uh, our education system in Britain is crumbling, not because of a lack of investment, though that is certainly true, but because of an obsession with form-filling, uh, with a lack of focus on content and inspirational direction, with a lack of confidence in schools themselves, and too much reliance, too much veneration of organisations like Ofsted. Uh, the minister is not going to provide the change needed. The change needed needs to come from the schools themselves, from the parents, and from a renewed an invigorated confidence in the schools and in the teachers. And I think that may have to come from a, a, a change in focus in how things are done. We should be putting far more confidence in not only schools, but also in the students themselves. Students can get the result, get the research, get the information so much better than teachers. Teachers are not there to provide information. Teachers are there to direct students to where they can provide where they can find the information. Uh, teachers might might be able to provide um, internet links. Might, might might have internet links playing in the classroom. You, you you might be able to get an entire resource, an entire structured lesson uh, of. So pseudo pseudo lectures tailored for the year group with information much better than uh, Mr. Bloggs or uh, Mrs. Bloggs trying to produce all that information early in the morning while at the same time trying to mark all the scripts and assemble all the box ticking for the next day's lessons. We should make it easier on teachers so they can concentrate on being an inspiration themselves, on showing enthusiasm for the collection of, of information, enthusiasm for research, as we don't know everything, um, and, uh, and, you know, the, the dismissal of Thornbury's comments this morning are alarming because they weren't dismissed because they were wrong, they were dismissed because they were not getting the message right. So in other words, again, it's about control and it's about sloganizing rather than truth and observation and testing the policies before implementing them. This is a policy which is being driven by an ideological obsession uh, and it's, and I think it's a misreading. It's not about advantage, and not all independent schools are Eton or Harrow. And even Eton and Harrow, um, I, I know Harrow, <laughs> and I know boys from Harrow whose parents removed them from the school because it wasn't providing the right opportunities for their children. They removed them. And with good reason, I was aware of the reasons, and I, I, I would absolutely support and applaud what they did. Um, many schools are frankly up themselves, and a lot of independent schools are significantly more so than state schools, because schooling in the UK comes with an obsession an obsessive commitment to control. You can't question the authorities in a school, whether you're a parent or a child or indeed a teacher. Um, I remember being told myself that uh, I, I, I misunderstood the structure of um, a British school because it's not like a university. You can't question the authority. But you have to. When the authority is wrong, um, and I have watched again and again and again schools falling off a cliff because they are being 
managed by twits in control, who cannot be questioned. And often in these cases, the twits in control are not even in the school. We need to give control to the classroom teachers and the administration needs to be there to serve those classroom teachers. The head teacher is there to serve. The heads of the department are there to serve. Ofsted, most importantly, is there to serve and to support, not there to dictate and control. And if we get that right, then maybe we can also start to change the focus of our educational content. As teachers, we are there to serve the student. And particularly when it comes to independent education, I find it extraordinary that students uh, or pa parents are paid for an education and then told what subjects they can and cannot study in the school. Nonsense. Nonsense. If we rethought the way we acquire content, then a class teacher is there to inspire whether, whether the class is studying Greek or studying knitting. We need a different way to deal with education. And now is the time to call for that. And the comprehensive approach to education should be much closer to what I've just described. A comprehensive approach to education is one that allows all children to realize their potential. And that means we shouldn't be throwing the same sort of rubbish at everybody, as if the teacher is some sort of oracle. The teacher is not. The teacher is with the students, gather, gathering in front of the mass of knowledge to try and access it, make sense of it. I, as a teacher, am looking in the same place as the students, or at least I should be, and at every single level. I, I've had a very long um, teaching career, and I'm really proud that I've taught at every single level in the educational system, right the way from nursery school. I was a nanny as well right the way from nursery school, right the way up to primary school, secondary school, and university. And, uh, and, and a variety of different subjects. I've been a head of department. I've managed uh, an entire faculty, two entire faculties, I think. And, and at the same time, I've made a point of going back into schools at different levels as a supply teacher or for short-term contracts. And I'm very much, and, and incidentally, both in state schools and in private schools, both in the UK and abroad. And I think I'm in a good position to make comments about the state of our education. It's appalling. It's appalling, it's conceited, and the staff room in a modern school is a place of horror. And I, I, I must say that I, I will think twice before going back into another staff room. Uh, it's a place where bullying is encouraged. And if you see bullying on the playground, you can be absolutely certain that it's going on in the staff room. We need a transformation of the way education is done, and it's not about getting rid of private education or putting VAT on private education. Um, in the past, state education was heavily dependent on private education. Private education provided the um, token of quality, and state education followed that. Today, I think that's less so, and private education is not that much better than state education. Sometimes private schools have better facilities. Sometimes they don't, by the way. Um, 
But all schools have been tarred with the um, soggy brush, like the loo brush of the loo brush of Ofsted, and it is a pernicious influence, a reeking influence. It's uh, it, it needs to be cleaned or ditched, flushed away. Ofsted should be there. It should know its place. It's there to support, not to dictate. <laughs>